So we've talked about the new practice, relatively new practice of the Oscars of nominating more than five Best Picture nominees. I've said in the past that I think this is a good thing because it leads to more movies getting the recognition they deserve. But I think you could also look at it as sort of like devalued currency. If you print a bunch of money and circulate it, the value of the money goes down. Yes. Do you think that could be the case with the Best Picture nominations? It felt like it this last year. It didn't seem like there were that many movies that really were qualified to be there. Nor were there the type of movies that this was intended to bring in. Like how we had Mad Max Fury Road last year. It's like this is a great crowd favorite action movie. We didn't have any of that this last year. Since this new policy was instated, the number of nominees has never gone below eight, and I don't think it ever will, because or the merrier. only nominating six, Hollywood's basically saying, we didn't make a lot of good movies this year, and they're never going to admit that. Yeah. I don't know if they made a lot of good movies last year. It's like, it was a very unthrilling Oscar season. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Even the movie that I wanted to win, Moonlight, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a great movie, but I'm not passionate about it. It's not it. blowing me away. No. Ah. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Uh... Would you like to grab the stack of mail? Because it's time to do unboxing. Ooh, I will grab the stack of mail. Welcome to Unboxing. This is our satellite show for Welcome to the Basement. It's where we thank our donors and we look into our mailbag to see the stuff that people have sent to us. Got many things to open. It's too bad you broke that letter opener. Oh, don't bring that up. A trio of postcards. This one is from Brad over at Harvard. Harvard? Got it. This is from our buddy Andrew, who must know how much of a Hamilton fan I am, because it is a Marquis de Lafayette postcard. All right. Here's the Lancelot <laughs> of the Revolutionary set. Did you finish it? Have you listened to the whole thing? Uh, it's like, it's, it, yeah, little, little by little, I'm going through right. it. Okay. And Matt Berkey, who says, having a lovely holiday in Rome. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> we have some donors. Yes, people have gone to welcome to the basement show.com and contributed. Here are their names Simon, Luke, Dan, Kevin, Betty, Michael, aka Captain Spaulding, Anne, Maura, Nicole, who says, locking myself up in my studio to get work done and starting the series from the beginning. Let's see how far I get. Hopefully, she lived. Andrew, Melanie, Brian, Michael, Alexander, Kelsey, and Simon, who says, Love your brand of helpful, witty banter. If you want to become a donor, you can go to welcometothebasementshow.com and you can donate. We've got a couple of sealed envelopes here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's in them. Lewis from the UK writes, Was watching your old episodes and I can't believe you didn't like Fritz the Cat. To show some love, here is my Fritz tattoo from my in-progress animation sleeve. Look at that. <laughs> wow. So, I think he's a fan. This is from Joanna over in London, and she says she found a couple of postcards from the BFI, the British Film Institute. Mm. One of them is for a film called The Blue Lamp. Failure. And the other one, I'm not a number, I'm a free man, from The Prisoner. Who is number one? She said she started watching our show last year, and she finds it very enjoyable. Thank you, Joanna. Yes. Now, I've got one last letter here I'm going to read. It's from someplace called Movie John in Philadelphia, and printed on here is, You need me. You need me badly, because I'm your last contact with human reality. I love you. <laughs> a little creepy. <laughs> Maybe it's a film reference we don't get. Could be. I hope so. There's a little, uh, like a newsletter here. A little oh. booklet. A zine? It's a zine, yeah. Holy cow, I love zines. This is from the crew over at Movie John, and they say that their friend Ashley turned them onto our show, and so they sent us this little package of stuff. There's four of them. I cannot read all these names, but uh, Francis and Rosalie are two of them. I, I have the other names here. Benjamin, Jamie, or Jaime, and uh, Hugo. And there's another quote uh, in here, which I think is a clue to what this quote is from. And it is, I miss you, I miss not touching each other, not seeing each other, not breathing in each other. I want you all the time, no one else. And it is from the film, Blue is the Warmest Color. Ah, which I so, have not seen. I'm guessing that's where that's from. See, it's no longer creepy. Yeah, good. This is fascinating. Everyone, get a subscription to Movie John. That's uh, Movie J-A-W-N. And it's a zine. I love the fact that this is analog. You have to hold it in your hand. Sure. And that you can't just... Share it with the world. Friends. Somebody took that and collated it and stapled it by hand, probably. Did a bunch of Xerox art. Yeah. Xerox art. Yes! And now, dispatches from my now-defunct MySpace blog. MySpace blog! 
As a tribute to our buddy Matt in the UK who sent us a big box of snacks last time, I give you this. May 15th, 2006, This Day in Snacks. As I was getting my coffee this morning, I noticed a new snack chip in the vending machine. Clamato-flavored tortilla chips. You know, Clamato, the beverage that combines tomato juice and clam broth into one thirst-quenching taste sensation. I can't imagine coming off a rousing game of sports and not having a quart of chilled Clamato to soothe my parched throat. Now it's a chip. The first ever seafood-flavored tortilla chip, I think. I can't resist bizarre shit like this, so I bought a bag. The chips are bright red. They shouldn't be this red. And the package sports bilingual nutritional facts and ad copy, along with the slogan, Anima tu dia. Animate your day? Liven up your day? Tona? Yeah. Yeah. It seems that the Clamato demographic skews Latino. The chips are tantalizingly gross. They're basically tomato juice flavored chips, and every once in a while you get a vaguely shellfishy aftertaste. But they are not so gross that I'm not going to finish the rest of the bag. There is a certain level of nasty that doesn't make you recoil or reject it, but makes you keep on eating whatever the gross thing is. It's like your tongue can't reconcile with your brain that what it just tasted is supposed to be a snack, and it has to keep on eating to figure it out. Simple snacking becomes scientific investigation. I will finish this bag and never think about buying these things again. (laughs) So there you go. That was my experience 11 years ago with a bag of snacks. (laughs) We got a right to pick a little fight in Guangxi. <laughs> We're doing a panorama pan with a panorama cam. I'm Annie Oakley, or a reasonable facsimile. A <laughs> blow Bill wants to buy Omar the Wonder Horse. He's offering a good price. Omar coming. What is more incredible is the fossil beside him. I'm convinced that that is the tibia of some humanoid that existed at the same time as the Eohippus. I call these tiny humanoids oh, Billy Barticus. <laughs> Well, that there's a Gwangi if I ever seen one. Scott. Toilet paper at the screen. Ah, like an ad ad. Yeah, he's pulling a Luke Skywalker on him. I guess there was a sale on purplish blue clay the day that Harry Hausen went down to the art store. <laughs> if you could just get him back alive. Yeah, the only thing I want to get back alive is me. Not you, incidentally, or anyone else here. <laughs> Just me. I need some water before we sit out. Be right back. Wimp. I need to go to King's Landing to be the hand of the king. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't work on Superman, and it doesn't work on him. And now, viewer questions. The part of the show where we answer viewer questions. You have questions? Put them in the comments. We might answer it. Carson McClendon asks, What about movies that you both have seen and wish that you could review on the show but can't? Last year I finally saw Stranger Than Paradise, the Jim Jarmusch movie. Yeah, yeah. And that would have been perfect for this show because A, it's an important movie. It's funny and easily mockable, but in a respectful way. Sure. I I think that would have worked fine on this show and I think it would have been a good time. It would have put a spell on us. Mm Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. I love that song. Yeah, I do too. I can't get enough of that song. If you love that song, watch Stranger Than Paradise. You're going to hear it a lot. Eric Harrison asks, I've always been curious how you guys record the watching of the movies without the movie audio being too loud or your voices being too low. Uh, It's very simple. We uh, We have this little guy right here our field recorder. We basically set it up in front of us on the couch and it's facing away from the television. So it picks up our voices louder than the TV. For some movies, I still have to ride the volume quite a bit because as we know, some movies will get very quiet and then there'll be explosions. Pixie songs movies. (coughs) We got some packages to open. Do we now? Yeah. This is from Vincent over in San Marcos. This feels different than most Vincent from San Marcos. He said he was going to switch it up. He said he was. He felt he was getting too predictable. After all this time, anthrax. <laughs> <laughs> and this is from Amina in Seattle. Hey, DVDs. Three good movies here. South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. The first Sin City movie. And Inglorious Bastards. Oh, I've seen all those. Yeah, me too. But they're great. They're the movies I should watch again. I've, I've been wanting to watch Inglorious Bastards uh, again for no. quite a bit. Your wish is granted. Burt Lancaster, go tell the Spartans. 
All right, we will. I hear that if you tell the Spartans, they get mad at you and they kick you in the pit. And they identify the location that you're mm -hmm. currently in. Two final packages. There you go. Thank you. I'm thinking these are two more DVDs. Do Calling you. it. Ooh. Ah. This is from Sparks DVD Sales. No note. It is Gardens of Stone. With uh, wait. James Kahn, Angelica Houston, James Earl Jones. Yeah. We have from Ian in Austin, who is a big animation fan. The Illusionist. So this is by the French company that made the uh, triplets, triplets of Belleville. Belleville yeah. Yes, I've seen that. An embarrassment of DVDs. The donors have been thanked. The boxes have been unboxed, even though today they were envelopes. No boxes. No boxes. Today's unboxing is a lie. It's an unenveloping. But uh, we had a good time, and we're glad that you joined us. You can see the next episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday. You can see the next episode of Unbo Unboxing the Friday after that. We will see you then. Good night. Good night. The Rosita's my mule. She absolutely refused to budge. Then she kicked it. I don't know where she's gone now. The B-list Richard Attenborough. <laughs> if you'd like to look in that trunk, you'll find a piece of rock. You'll also find some shocking nude daguerreotypes. <laughs>